Hello, time to look at some USB adapters. They're necessary, and no one likes them. So let's find out if they are the real deal, who's lying, and who makes the good stuff. These little adapters are quite numerous now. There's hundreds of brands I've never heard of, and I'm sure hundreds more will pop up in a short time. What are these adapters for? In looking at the market, they talk a lot about data, but in general, they have to do something else that a USB-C port won't do unless it's negotiated for, and that's deliver power. So do these USB adapters accomplish that? And what technology do they use to do this? Of course, there has to be some measurements. So these are gonna be checked out a couple of different ways. One will be a continuity check to see if these cables have the proper connections. Then another check will be to see what kind of USB negotiation they do. And finally, these will be checked for series resistance to see how much power is gonna be lost when using one of these adapters. It's gonna get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. So, as I talked about in the beginning, these adapters are required in several situations. The first one is for the data connection, which does seem to be the primary use for these. The situation is, the device you have is still a USB-A connection, requires a pretty high data rate, and more than the old USB 2 connection, so 5 or 10 gigabits per second are the typical negotiation rates. But your new computer only has USB-C ports, so you need an adapter. Well, these little USB-C to USB-A adapters come to the rescue, and they're selling a lot of these. So you got data, but what about power? One of the advantages of that USB-A port with faster data rates was that it can deliver more power too. The USB-C port can deliver even more power, so that's great. Just connect everything up and it should work, right? Even with your more modern USB-C appliances? Think again. There are extra pins in that USB-C connection that make it safer and enable more functions. You don't just want to pull out a USB-C connector with high voltage on it. There's some extra pins, CC pins that communicate for power delivery to access power over the USB port. These adapters can enable that function if they have the correct setup. We'll find out if these adapters all make power delivery work. Obviously this one did, but why did it work? So before getting into this too much on these things, why not just take them apart to see what makes them tick? I have my trusty pliers and ready to abusively open these as quickly as possible. Now, one of these claims to have some kind of USB chip in it, so it will be interesting to see if that is present or not. These are very simple devices. A USB-A socket, a USB-C mail connector, a circuit board to connect them, and a housing of some kind is the nuts and bolts of it. The question is, are there any extra components on that circuit board? The basic answer is yes. It looks like there is one resistor from one of the CC lines on the USB-C mail connector to the ground pin, and that's it. I don't see anything else here. It looks like there is a spot for a capacitor, but I don't know why that would get populated here. They do need to take some care with this tiny circuit board to make sure that the signal integrity is maintained as the USB protocol is pushing some fairly high data rates through these little things. The cheaper ones, I'd imagine they could have some issues with that. The claims on this U-Green of a protocol chip are complete nonsense. Just like the others, one resistor. The six amps and 120 watts of power on the orange one, also just a bunch of nonsense. Again, one resistor. So that seems to be all that's in these. That does mean they have some limitations, but I'm gonna go over that later. So since these all apparently just have a resistor in them, it's probably easiest to just measure it and see if that's the case for all of them. So I have a USB-C connector mounted on a circuit board that breaks out the CC pins. These are the pins that communicate for power delivery from your power adapter to your device and vice versa. I did remove the resistors from this circuit board. The resistor value, which you can look up online, link to the DigiKey forum in the description, this value determines the current limit. All of these chose the 3 amp limit, or in this case a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor. They're all exactly the same, except for the other U-Green adapter, which is the opposite polarity. I actually need this to test these. Ha. Huh. This means that these all use simple or legacy mode to ask for 5 volts and 3 amps from the USB power delivery device or protocol chip. This is okay, but it does rely on certain other things being done correctly. 
The fact that these use a fixed resistor value is also another limitation and potentially a hazard for these devices. I got this KBRQ tester for free, actually, so I'm not gonna do a review of this since free, so I'm biased. But it does one thing and one thing well. I will include a link to the manufacturer down in the description, no affiliate, but there's so many links down there. You should go check them out, after the video is done, of course. I have the older, more simple one as well, but this just makes it real easy to see what a USB cable can do. In this case, these adapters did not degrade the performance of the adapter chain any further, so all indicated 10 gigabits per second data rate capable and all data wires were connected through in all cases, so no cheaters there at least. This will also indicate the power capability and for these cables it shows the capability at 15 watts, being 5 volts and 3 amps by reading that 5.1K ohm resistor. I'm gonna do the series resistance my way with that next setup, but this can also indicate that. I don't know if it's in the works, but it would be nice if this indicated the negative side resistance, which I think it does, but I don't know how to find it out, and an ability to offset the value by a known cable, or in other words, introduce an offset. So I could measure these adapters directly with the same known cable in each case. So the way I measured the series resistance is with my load tester and this concoction of wires. It basically lets me measure the resistance of the wire by measuring the voltage dropped across the wire and the current passing through it. It also allows the voltage drop to be measured on both the positive side and the negative side of the circuit. It looks much worse than it really is. Anyway, I measured the adapter and cable to find an offset value to subtract from each of the measurements to get the adapter resistance itself in isolation. Okay, so I think that's enough background information. Time to finally look at some adapters. First up is this Amazon Basics adapter. This looks and feels like a premium adapter. It's actually the first one I purchased and I've been using this for years and it's still working just fine. It is expensive. The performance is actually not that great compared with the others. So time to keep looking. Second up is this tiny anchor adapter. The form factor seems to be the most adopted of the adapters. This does add one feature that is a tiny little LED to indicate that it's getting power. Not sure it needs that, but whatever. The performance is actually quite good, but it does come with a high price tag. This is the second one I ever purchased. Next is this Ugreen adapter. You'll notice this one is backwards to the rest. I needed this to test all the other adapters, so figured I'd throw it in. It doesn't negotiate for USB because it would be powered from the USB-A port. It does function though. It has a pull up resistor on the CC line as opposed to a pull down resistor because this would be the power source. The performance is pretty good. Fourth is the TFAC. This little adapter is the first ultra budget option at $1 per adapter. The performance is not the best in class, but for the price, I don't think you can beat it. It does what the others do and costs less. Fifth is this base new. The model and make were the same name. This is definitely one that's going to pop up and disappear with different brand names. The performance is average, but the price is good. Sixth is this Ugreen adapter. I had more hopes for this one. It is a budget option and it offers budget performance to go with it. This one claimed to have a protocol chip in it for some reason. It doesn't, it's just a resistor. So more nonsense, wonderful. Next, the Syntec device is the seventh one today. So many of these things. This device is on the more expensive side of things, but the performance is actually pretty good. It was one of the more difficult ones to take apart, which means it should be a bit more durable. It meets its claims and is also one of the best sellers on Amazon, actually the number one in USB accessories. It's there for a reason. Eighth is an unpronounceable letter soup name adapter. Cheapest of the bunch. Performance is average. Not sure how reliable this connector is going to be. Ninth is the AV Max. This is well priced. The performance is good. This is probably the diamond in the rough here. It is cheap though, so the USB connector might not be the most reliable. Tenth is the JS Aux cabled adapter. This has the same issue as the Amazon Basics option. It's expensive and the performance is worse. Next. Okay, lucky last and also near least. This one makes bold claims of 120 watts and six amps of power delivery. That's nonsense, it's also just a resistor. It doesn't do anything or aid in any such power delivery. It is cheap and the performance is okay. Again, 
the cheaper connector, I worry about the longevity. The overall performance of these was quite positive. They all worked and did what they needed to do. Some have some issues with shaking and solid connections, so maybe not the most reliable. Some make claims that they don't have or just don't make any sense. And looking at the cost of these adapters, the cheapest end of the scale, sub $1 is crazy. All the way to the expensive end, the JSOX and Amazon Basics made it too complicated by adding a wire, so more cost than needed. In chart form, it is kind of surprising how much the anchor costs. I guess adding an LED to indicate it's on cost a lot of money. One of the best performance adapter is also one of the cheapest though, so next chart. In looking at a chart of the resistance for these adapters, the Syntec takes the win. The JS Aux and Amazon Basics again fall to the bottom with the cable, but the surprise is the Ugreen adapter which didn't have a good fit. Along with some of the others, the orange ones, require a couple tries to get a good connection. The TPAC is the surprising one though. Very low cost, reasonably good performance, not sure on reliability with something at this price point though. Okay, let's give these things a rating. From best to worst, with 10 being the first choice and 1 being the last choice, the Syntec wins. It's expensive, but it's the best performance. It's not expensive grand scheme, but compared with the real cheap stuff, it's expensive. At least for that, you are getting top tier performance. The AV Max came out of nowhere though, offering the same specifications at a lower price point. The TPAC is the best budget option. Anchor also charges a lot, but does deliver the performance. So what are some of the issues with these devices? Well, if you ask for three amps from a USB-C port, it's probably gonna try and deliver three amps, regardless of whether your device is set up correctly or the cable can handle it. Thankfully, this is still a pretty low current value, so barring using those really cheap steel USB cables that catch on fire, it should be okay in most situations. But know that you aren't getting the USB smart communication. This is setting the limit at three amps on that port. Whether your device can or should use that is not considered. So things like battery chargers that aren't quite made right could have problems with this. The data side could also run into issues. You are introducing potentially unknown quality signal traces in between the USB-C and shielded cables that are expected to reduce signal integrity. So the data rates through an adapter probably won't ever be as good as a proper cable directly connected from device to device. The connectors on the cheaper side will probably break off or break wires inside or stop working with any pressure on the connector. Really any of them could break, but that could be said for any electronics. Okay, conclusion time. So there's actually some market segmentation here. There's a couple with poor marketing claims, and there's some that seem too cheap to be good or reliable. Then on the other end, there are some that are very expensive for what is essentially an empty box. In terms of general performance, they actually all measured relatively close. There are some clear standouts depending on what you are looking for though. So again, why do you need these things? Well, for one, they offer a way to power a USB-A device from a USB-C smart or power delivery port. Of course, that's most of my use cases, but the more advertised use case is the data rate. People need these to be able to connect the newer equipment that only has USB-C ports. There are still a ton of USB-A accessories out there. These offer relatively high speed data rates and compatibility with your existing equipment within reason. The USB adapters with the cable built in aren't great. This extra cable reduces performance and increases cost. So these are some I'd steer clear of. I don't see the advantage of the short cable. Then there are two value options that look pretty good, the AV Max and the TFAC. The TFAC starts to show it's getting cheaper with a little worse series resistance, but the AV Max seems to strike a good balance of cost and performance. The Anchor, no surprise, is one of the best quality devices. It's also one of the most expensive. The Syntec is the best rated device on Amazon. It gets that reading for a reason. They're actually really good. It's well built and it functions well. Let me know your use case for these and if you use one. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.